Hey Sharon, we'll start here in just a few minutes. Please tag someone, share with someone. Hi Heather. How you feeling, Sister Sharon? I saw your post about your cousin. How are you doing? Yeah, God is good. Amen. Only he can do it. I think that's what your post said. Only he can do it. Uh, Rhonda, are you in a place that you can open us up with a song? I know I'm putting you on the spot. Sorry. Hello, Sister Judy. How are you? Let me know, Rhonda, if you're in a place. I'll bring you in so you can bless us in song. Belongs to you. Belongs to you. Amen. We're going to be a little interactive tonight. So uh, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, and we'll get started uh, as we're going through. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for who you are and we love you, God. We know that there is absolutely positively no one like you. Lord, we know that we can do nothing without you. We can't breathe. We can't move. We don't have any existence. Hallelujah, because all of the glory belongs to you. So God, we thank you for who you are today. We thank you that we can't make it without you. Hallelujah. We thank you that we couldn't be sustained. Hallelujah. Any day, any week, any hour, any month, God. Hallelujah. We can't breathe without you, think without you. Hallelujah. Have a plan that works without you. Hallelujah. That is sustained without you. We couldn't have made it through uh, these sheltered end days. So God, we thank you. Our identity, our purpose, the foundation of our lives is rooted and grounded in you. And if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that does not have that rooting and that grind, that grind, ground foundation of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit in them, Father, I pray that you stretch forth your mighty hand airways we take control over the prince of the air in the name of jesus there will be no interruption in this broadcast in jesus name god we thank you for the power of god and we thank you we move breathe have our being and our existence through you now be with us in this hour god we thank you daddy and we love you in jesus name we pray amen amen tag somebody share invite someone all of the glory belongs to god so um, we, if, if you did not get a chance, you can go to our website, The Streams Church, and then click on, I put the link in the um, broadcast, so hopefully you see it there. Um, you can also uh, give online, you can give uh, through your cell phone, amen, uh, your offering for today to The Streams Church, not to me, my, not to my ministry, this is to The Streams Church, so uh, please tagged here. I did not know how to do that. 
but uh, please uh, make sure you sow your offering and or your uh, tithes. Amen today. Amen, Sister Yvette. Uh, Sister Shell, thank you for joining us. Anne, Judy, uh, so many. Uh, Miss Sister Swanson, tag this, share with somebody. I believe this word is going to be a blessing to someone today. Amen. So um, today we are uh, continuing with our lesson on the introduction of eternal glory as an intercessor. The introduction to the eternal glory as an intercessor. And today's uh, session is eternal glory. That's the whole thing. Hey, Sister Gwen. Happy birthday to my bestie friend, Gwen. Um, so if you go to our website, you will see um, the link to the Bible study. So the Bible study talks about um, understanding that as intercessors, it is something greater than just asking God to fix something. Lord have mercy. We know we have many things in Indianapolis and across this country that we need God to fix. Fix it, Lord. And only God can do it. And that's just the truth. And as we look at what we're dealing with with the pandemic, as we look at what we're dealing with um, with the murders that have happened here in Indianapolis in just the last 24 hours, three, three, three people under the age of 25 have died. Um, we had the young man last night. We had two young people last night, a young man, 19, a young man, Rose, I think was his last name. We had a young man um, by the name of um, Brother Reed, uh, Sean, the gentleman uh, that they are protesting about. They should be protesting about all of them. But um, any, any senseless death, black on black crime, police crime, white on black crime, all of that, we should be um, as intercessors stepping in and praying about those things. And then there was a young lady today uh, who was hit by a police officer uh, who was pregnant. And so, so much has been going on, not only in our city, but cities across the country. And if we never needed, good God almighty, intercessors, if we never needed intercessors, we need them now. If my people who are called by my name, that's just not intercessors. We are all called to intercede. We are all Receive, but he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways. He said, I promise you, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will hear your, heal your land. Three things. the God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. He has promised to do these things for us. Why don't we? Why don't we pray? I, I'm, that's a general statement. I know those under the sound of my voice, you wouldn't even be logged on. This ain't no topic for the average person, right? You're, you're logged on to hear what this lesson is about because you are probably a praying person. But overall, we tend to leave prayer to the intercessors, to the ministers, uh, to the pastors, to the elders. But that's not what the word says. He says, pray without ceasing. Was that just to the pastors? Was that just to the intercessors? No, that was to all of us. He said, when you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray. And so this lesson today is speaking to us about understanding your identity as a believer. Oh my God. What does that have to do with intercession? Well, if you don't understand who you are, when you don't understand the power of God that is at work within you, you're not going to operate from authority. You're not going to operate from an understanding that's whatsoever you ask for in his name. He has promised to do it. Amen. Hey, Sister Hughes, Brother Robert, Mother Crow. Hey, Mary, to God be the glory. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining Healing Streams for our Bible study this evening, the Streams Church. So we thank God that those under the sound of my voice, uh, my sans Natasha, minister of the gospel, want to understand the importance of interceding, standing in the gap, filling the gap, making up the hedge. Now, 
If you don't understand your identity, if you don't understand who your father is in your house, that there's an authority that your earthly father has in your house. How many of you had mothers who would say, go ask your daddy? <laughs> and then your mom had some authority because your daddy would say, go ask your mama. You got to know the authority of the parent to which uh, brought in to this world that had a plan for you before, before the foundations of the world. You have to know your identity. How you going to pray and ask God for something, stand in the gap and come with authority and pull down demons and, 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 and command the, earth, the heavens to come into the earth when you don't even know who you are? You got to know who you are. So this lesson talks about knowing your identity. I, I, am, I am a born identity uh, groupie. I, all of the born identity uh, uh, movies, I watch them. And the whole thing about the Bourne identity was that Jason Bourne suffered from an extreme case of memory loss. And it was a whole conspiracy behind him losing his memory. Well, let me help you, beloved. There is a conspiracy against you as a believer in Jesus Christ. It's called the devil. He has a whole plan set up to keep you off your block to keep knocking you off your block, to keep getting you distracted, to keep taking you out of focus so that you can forget who you are. Yes, yes, that's what he does. He has a plan, but God said he will not have you ignorant of Satan's schemes and devices. That's what he's saying. Isn't that good news? He said, I am not going to have you ignorant of Satan's schemes and devices. And so the enemy operates from a place of, see, we got all of these conspiracy theories that's going around. And I contend that a lot of these conspiracy, conspiracy theories has pulled particularly our African-American young men away from God. Mm -hmm. It's pulled them away. And so I said today in my post, I said, we got COVID, we got cops, we got choices, and we got crime, and we got conspiracy. I knew nothing about this lesson when God had me uh, post that today and speak on this. The enemy has a conspiracy, a plan, a strategy against you. And it's false. He tries to make us think we are not who God says we are. So we are in our own born identity crisis, not Jason Bourne, B-O-R-N-E, but B-O-R-N, B-O-U-R-N-E was Jason Bourne's last name, but we are in a B-O-R-N identity crisis. We forget that we were born into Christ. How did you forget that? How did you forget that? How did you forget the cross? We just had, we just had resurrection day that the world calls Easter in your Easter bonnet with all the frills upon it. Mm -hmm. we have forgotten who we are. And so let me remind us of some things about you. Genesis 27 says, so God created mankind in his own image and in the image of God, he created them. That means you and me, everything that is human, he created in his image, male and female. I need you to say, I was created in God's image. We're going to start from the beginning. Amen. From the Genesis, from beginning. I was in your image. And so God, we thank you for that. We ain't letting him stop us. We just going to keep rolling right through him. Yeah, we will. So we thank you, Father, that we were created in your image. And thank you, Lord, for uh, wonderful people not leaving us for those few seconds. He always trying to mess with somebody. He ain't got no authority, though. So he might own the air, but we serve the King of Kings. Amen. So we learn how to call on the King of Kings. So we are created in his image. Genesis, J Jeremiah 1 verse 7 says, before I formed you in your womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and I appointed you. Listen, this scripture says as a prophet to the nations, you have to understand God appointed you to do something. He appointed you to do something in his kingdom, in his church, in his kingdom. He appointed you. You know what you were appointed, appointed to do? If you know what you were appointed to do, put it in the comments. I'm, I'm going to wait on you. What were you appointed to do? Appointed to do. 
You have an assignment to do that thing. Not, not I'm appointed to be a prophet, but I'm appointed to do created in the image of God. Amen. I was created in the image of God. Were you appointed to do? What assignment? Is it to young people? Were you assigned to be a teacher? Were you assigned to be an artist? And so by being an artist, you use your gift of encouragement and exhortation. Did God assign you to be a teacher and so you use your teaching gift? Did he assign you to be a counselor and so you use your gift of wisdom? Follow me. You got to know your identity. And understanding your identity is also what gets you to purpose. It gets you to understanding the vision that God has for your life. It says that besides, because of this lack of understanding, um, we sometimes, um, we, we neglect this assignment um, as an intercessor. And I said it earlier, we will surrender that. Amen, uh, Minister Posey. We will surrender this assignment as an intercessor to, as I said earlier, um, to others in the church. This actually says, and because we do that, the thousands of evils enter into the church because we leave intercession to the pastors, to the ministers, to the prophets, to those who hold the ascension gifts in the church, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, the prophet, and the apostle. Those uh, ministers or elders or we or those who are a part of the intercessory prayer ministry. Because we leave intercession to them. The Bible says that often thousands of evils enter into the church. What evils have we seen enter into our churches? Do I need to start listing them? I, you don't want me to list them, do you? But you know what they are. We know what the evils are. And God is saying that because people are not fulfilling their assignment as an intercessor in that church. And I will go so far as to say in the kingdom, I will go so far as to say in your home, it's not relegated to women only. Intercession is not just for women. It's for men too. Matter of fact, who were the first intercessors? They were men. Moses, first journaler, uh, journaling, in his, uh, journaling in his journal was a man. So intercession is not just for women. We must break out of this identity crisis. One for Genesis 1 actually says, do you not know that your identity comes from God? Do you not know that? Do we not understand that our identity, who we are, who we are, we, we, we identify with Christ, hear me, but your identity comes from the Father. Even in the natural, your identity comes from your Father to determine if you're a male or a female. It comes from the Father, from the seed of the man. So when we understand our identity comes from God, so, so let's walk through this. John chapter 1 says, these are some things you need to understand. Truly to understand your identity, these are some foundational things you have to get to. We already said Genesis 1, 27, you were created in his image. There you go. That's number one. Number two, you were given the right to become a child of God. You were given the right. You were given access. You have the privilege. We have the privilege to be called a child of God. That's good news. That is good news. Tag somebody, share it. This is good. Somebody needs to understand who they are in God so that they can walk in this authority as an intercessor. You can call things that are not as though you heard that same God. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 says, you have been adopted into the sonship of Jesus through Jesus Christ. You are a son of God. Now, because we're women, we still have sonship, okay? Which means we have access to all of the things that are heirs coming from God. So you have to understand you are an heir of God and you are a joint heir with Christ. You are an heir of God. So things come directly to you from God. You are an heir. Then there are things that come from Jesus Christ. Listen, do you not understand how much of a blessing that's? I remember once I said to, and I probably said it more than once, to my pastor. 
and anyone that's a pastor, the privilege of your wife, in this case, he's a male, your wife to say you are her husband and her pastor and they freely call you, your sons freely call you that and pastor, that is pretty amazing. That they not only honor you as dad, or if you are a female and you are a pastor, they not only honor you as mom or wife and respect you in those roles, but they also respect you as their pastor. See, because in those earthly relationships of father uh, and and mother and husband and wife and all of them, dad and mom, uh, they not required to watch over your soul, pray for you. But your pastor watches over your soul. That is a command to him or her. So not only your father or your uh, mom who is a pastor praying for you as their child, they are now praying for you as God's child and given the responsibility to watch over your soul in the earth. That, that right there should make a couple of pastors on here shout. And then those who are married to them and then your children. That's that's like the blessing of Job. That's the double but Hey, Sister Eve, Paulette, Tony, and Gail. Thank you so much for joining us. And so understanding who you are in God. So you are adopted into God. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. That that's just some good news. That that should make somebody should be sending some dancing feet across here in the com in the comments. Amen. So understanding that. So you were created. Uh, uh, in his image, you were given the right to become and to be called a child of God. You were adopted into the sonship of God, which gives you access to every part of the kingdom. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. These are things you must understand. Hey, Sans Carmen. And then he says in, in first Peter, you are chosen. Not only were you chosen by God, but he says you are chosen. You are a chosen person. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. Okay, get your identity right. Hello? Get your identity right. Know who you are in God. Listen, let me tell you something. Over the years, you know, you seem so... No, 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 no. no. Let me because also you can see my eyes. Years ago, till I realized none of this has anything to do with me. This is all about God. Whatever confidence you have, you need to know that your confidence comes from God. That's why it cannot listen. This is why you can't let yourself be shaken. The reasons, and that doesn't mean we don't have that we don't have uh valley moments. It doesn't mean that. But when every time you turn around, you're being shaken, it's because it's by your power. It's because it's by your might. It's because that you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession. Isn't that good news? You are God's special possession. So there's no confidence that I have. There's no confidence that you have that any of us should think we so such a much. The Bible says, don't think more of yourself than you ought. Yes, have confidence, but know that that comes from you know what you you do when you wouldn't have that gift, you wouldn't have that talent, you wouldn't have that ability, you know that you wouldn't have that cuteness or that handsomeness if it was not for God. No entity and it all comes from him. It all comes from him. Hallelujah. So this makes me happy you would know who you are. He has shined a light on you so that you would know who you are. He's the lamp unto your feet. He is the light. Give me some thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for not leaving us. Listen, let me tell y'all something. When the enemy does stuff like, when, let me restate that. When things like that happen, you have to know that that's the enemy. You got to know that. I don't even have problems broadcasting, typically. But this is a word that you need to hear because there's somebody who's confused about their identity, okay? There's somebody who's confused about who they are in Christ and how understanding who you are unlocks the door to intercession. It gives you authority. So I ain't running, I ain't moving. We gonna finish 
what God gave us to start. Amen. Amen. So, uh, 1 John 4, uh, verses uh, 3, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. He said, this great love that God has uh, lavished on you. It, my God. And then, wait a minute. He calls you friend. He says, dear friend, you got to know that you're a child of God. What earthly father knowing how to give good gifts that your earth that your heavenly father won't do more? How many of you ever wanted a bike for your birthday or for Christmas and you worried your parents? You worried that they can't have a bike, can't have a bike, can't have a bike. They I want a bike, I want a red bike, I want a blue bike, I want bells, I want whistles, I want streamers, I want a horn, all of that. And when you woke up on Christmas morning or on your eighth birthday or your tenth birthday or your fifth birthday, did you have the bike? Because that's how much, if your earthly father, now part of the reason that I think we struggle, some people struggle as Christians, is because we did not have a um, healthy, good example of an earthly father, and we, rec we, we confuse the operation and how our earthly father handled things with how our heavenly father will handle things. Well, let me help you, beloved. It's not the same. It's not the same. Let, let me see. Maybe you had a brother that wasn't so kind to you. And because of that, you don't know how this brother-sister relationship is supposed to work. So you don't know how to interact with Jesus, not only as your Savior and your Lord, but as your big brother. Honey, I call them any time. Get them, Jesus. Get them. Deal with them. Get Satan. Get his imps that's messing with our broadcast. That's the authority that you have. Good God Almighty. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> so, the world doesn't know who they are. The world doesn't know who they are. So, it, we must walk in to who we are. This greatness issue, confronting. You, and the other thing is, particularly, and there are probably people under the sound of my voice that are not African American, and that's cool, but I'm going to say this. A lot of times, as African Americans, we tend to shrink back in our greatness because we weren't allowed to look people in the eye. We weren't allowed to talk back. We weren't allowed to have an opinion. And so, a lot of those slave mentalities are still in us. Let me help you with something. You are great. Greatness is in you. You know, I don't feel great. It don't matter how you feel. God is in you. And because God is in you, you and he is great. Don't we say it? And greatly to be praised? Don't, isn't that what we say? Didn't David say God <coughs> was terrible? That's what David said. He is great. He is terrible in all his ways. That means he is awesome. He is great. He is omni. And all of that is in you. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. It ain't about being conceited. It ain't about being cocky. It's not about being arrogant because he don't like none of that. But when your confidence is in Christ, you can stand flat footed and say, I ain't going to be moved. God is great. Tell him, Mary Posey. God is great. And because he's great, I'm great because he's in me. He ain't going to be great in you and say that you raggedy. He ain't going to be great in you and say that you broke. He ain't going to be great in you and he got all wisdom and say you stupid. Come on, y'all. Catch up. Greatness is in you. And because greatness is in you, this is your identity. You identify with Christ. Don't you identify with Christ? Isn't that why you call yourself a Christian? When you identify with Christ, that means you, you call yourself a Christian. And everything that is in Jesus is in you. You say, well, I don't have the gift of healing. Okay, you may not have the gift. The ability to heal is in He created our bodies to heal itself. We just don't know how to do it through our eating and rest and exercise. But we get there. <laughs> Glory to God. Holly, hallelujah. COVID making us figure out a whole bunch of stuff, right? But greatness is in you. It says so. This issue with greatness, we don't, we want, we don't want to say we're great. Well, I'm going to help you today. You're great. If you can't say it, I'll say it. Uh, Pastor Carol, you're great. Carmen, you're great. Lynette, you're great. Sister Swanson, you're great. Judy, you're great. Mary Posey, you're great. Alicia, you're great. Sharon, you're great. Eva, you are great. Gail, you are great. Paulette, you are great. Tony, did you know you was great? Patty, did you know you was great? Angela. You are great. Q, you're great since you won't say it for yourself. Barbara, you're great. Sister Erica, girl, you are great. Sister Retha, you are the bomb. You great. Sans, Natasha, you are great. 
Ah, Sister Hughes and Brother Robert and Pastor Tyler, you are great. Mary Posey, my, my mother crow, you are great. Andre, you great. Pastor Hill, you are great. Gwen, you are great. Monique, Yvette, uh, Sh uh, Sh uh, Shell, you are great. Sharon, you are great. And you're great. Judy, you great. Hallelujah. Rhonda, girl, you great. Sharon Arnold, you are great. See, y'all, y'all, you great. And if you struggle with this greatness, you will never walk in your authority. You got to know you're great. Not because of anything within yourself. We ain't that bright. We ain't that smart. We ain't even that cute. We ain't even that fine. We ain't even that handsome. God Almighty. Hallelujah. Even that Jesus gave to us. Come on. So even that, our identity. Thank you for mom and dad's genes. Come on. But you are great. And so this lesson tells us that if we struggle with this issue of greatness and confronting the church uh, and, and us dealing with our greatness, we will never understand what it means to be redeemed. What does it mean to be redeemed? You are redeemed. You have been brought. Let me tell you something. So understanding what redeemed means. Let's just do that first. Let's just do that first. You are redeemed, right? Okay, let's just start there. So being redeemed means you were bought but with a price. Okay, so you were bought uh, with the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. And his blood paid your ransom. I want to ask you something. If you were kidnapped today, how much do you think your ransom would be worth? What? Because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because of your commitment to Jesus Christ. Because of your worship to Jesus. Because of your faithfulness to Jesus Christ. How much would the devil ask Jesus for in your ransom? Just go and put it there. Put it in the comments. How much do you think he would ask for you? You know what your relationship is like. You know what your commitment is like. You know what your intercession is like. You know what your prayer life is like. You know what your giving is like. You know what your saying yes to God is like. You know what your obedience to God is. We ain't talking about being perfect. I'm just asking, how much do you think? The devil will say, for Tuesday's ransom, I need about 20 mil. Come on. I need about 100 mil for Tuesday. How much? Okay, it's priceless. But it is priceless. Amen. But see, when someone asks for a ransom, they ask for a particular amount. They didn't kidnap you. The devil tried to kidnap your soul. He tried to kidnap your life. He wanted to keep you strung out on the drugs. He wanted to keep you on that pole. He wanted to keep you on that corner. He wanted to keep you illegally in somebody else's bed that you weren't married to. He wanted to keep you out of the church. He wanted to keep you out of the kingdom. He wanted to keep you out of salvation. But you fought and said, uh-uh, I'm breaking free. I'm going to take these shackles off and I'm going to get free. And some of you got your own escape. You, you said, I'm walking up out of this. And Jesus said, that's all I needed. I just needed you to put down the pipe. I just needed you to put down the bottle. I just needed you to get up out of their bed. I just needed you to walk away from that. I just needed you to come to church. And when you did that, God took over your life and he took over your soul. But the truth is, when there's a ransom, there's a price. You ain't, you, honey, they said 100,000. Don't show up with 80. You're not getting it back. You're not getting that child back that was kidnapped. You're not getting that wife back. That, I said a million. Why are you showing up with 999000 I said a million. Go somewhere and find another dollar. They want all their money in that ransom. That's what God did for you. That's what Jesus did for you. His blood bought back your life. His blood bought back my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He wants your soul. Absolutely. But just in the natural, in the natural, in the natural. If, if it was a ransom for you, if it was a ransom for you, and, and we say that ransom that the devil is pricing is saying, well, based on how she's serving, based on your how many years commitment, could God Almighty on the prayer line, we not putting a price tag on it, but God put a price tag on you. Know what it was called? His blood. He put a price tag on you. His life. We say that we came to God. We, we found God. You ain't find God. God found you. Good God Almighty. He paid it all. He paid it all. For you and for me was the propitiation. He paid it down to the penny. Good God Almighty. He paid it down to the penny. Good God Almighty. And so God wants you to be mindful of that. 
Now, certainly, it's just like us, you know, bringing our tithes and offering into the storehouse. Amen. And so we we give. We give, we, we, we bring it in, we, we sow it, we bring our tithes into the store, storehouse, we, we bring our offering, right? That's why the other, a uh, couple weeks ago, um, uh, uh, Sister Sharon, Minister Sharon talked about, it's not, a, it's not a bill, and I've been saying this for years, your tithe is not a bill. You don't pay your tithes, you bring your tithes, because it ain't yours no way, amen? And so this is, the, this is what God did for us. The devil wanted our soul. And so God said, I'm going to give my life for your soul. And it is priceless. But in the natural, if the enemy said they're worth this, listen, it's not what we were worth to God, the devil. Mm -mm. What, what it, it was what you were worth for him to keep you in bondage. I need him. I need her to stay in my kingdom. Because they doing good work for me. <laughs> and so I'm going to put a price on their head that I don't think that, the, uh, that well, you know, we're we talking in the natural now, that humans ain't going to pay. Only God could pay that ransom for your soul. That's just good news. to decide. That just sounds good to me. And so his blood, his blood paid it all. His blood was the full payment for our soul. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. And it freed us from the bondage of sin and death. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was um, in corporate and uh, I was an auditor. I, I was a process auditor. And so I had to audit the processes in departments to see where people were touching things two and three times. And <coughs> anything touched twice, well, really anything touched once, loses money. And I had to actually calculate the cost. Come on, that's it, Mary. At least 20 million. Ain't that right? I had to calculate the cost of how many times that piece of paper moved around the office before it met its final destination. And I had to include every person's salary. So if it took five days or 80 hours for that process to get done, I had to calculate everyone's touch. How much time did you spend with that piece of paper? About two hours. So you get paid how much an hour? You get paid $40 an hour, so that's 80. And you then it comes to you, and how long do you keep it? I had to calculate that. There was a value placed on something uh, getting to completion. Everything. And so because of that, we had to be able to calculate the value of what we bring to the table, of our role in that process. Yeah, yeah. So, you got to know you're great. Ain't nothing wrong with saying 20 mil, at least. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with saying that. That's how much I'm worth. Hallelujah. For God to give me, God got me out of the mess that I was in. The devil wanted to keep me in bondage. But God's blood, Jesus' blood, freed me from the law of sin and death. I'm just trying to help somebody to understand their identity and their worth. If you don't understand your worth, you'll never understand your identity. How valuable you are to God. That he sent his only son for you. If it was just you. If it was just you. Jesus would have went to the cross. If it was just you, he would have took the 39 stripes. If it was just you, he would have took the nails in his hand and in his feet. He would have took the piercing in the side. He would have took the crown of thorns. If it was just you. I know there's billions of Christians, but if it was just you, that's how valuable you are to him. We got to get this identity thing right. So when we go to God and we ask him for something or we... Um, stand in the gap for someone else and we intercede or we go into warfare and we stand toe to toe like in the spirit realm like uh-uh you can't have them you will not have our city what has opened up here in the last two days you are a liar you will not have our city good god almighty we will learn how to pray in agreement from a place of authority and say oh this is what's gonna happen you will stay your hand Oh, that's how we got to pray. That's not being cocky. That's not being arrogant. That's knowing your, author I, your authority in Jesus Christ. Good God Almighty. I know. I know. That might be a little too much. Hallelujah. For the body. But I'm, I'm at least 100 mil. At least. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Glory to God. So, so he talks about in this lesson, we have no power in prayer in 
individually or corporately uh, when we have this this um, ignorance of living in religious systems. He calls these religious systems a form of godliness. And the Bible says, but denying the power. So we have this form of godliness, but we deny the power. So we walk around saying who we are and what we believe and quoting scripture. But do you really believe it? Do you really believe what you pray? This is what this lesson is talk, talking to us about. If we're not in the church building every Sunday, every Wednesday, whenever you have Bible study, what are you still believing about God? How do you still see God? Question. Now that we've had to shelter in place, and I say pray in place and worship in place, now that we've had to do this, <coughs> you've had to do this, we've had to do this, how has your relationship grown? What have you recognized differently about your relationship with Jesus, with God? Since you're not in the church, nobody's cheerleading you on, get up, clap your hands, stump your feet, turn around, give your neighbor a high five, none of those calisthenics. All of this is just you and Jesus. And our prayer line in the morning, you may be listening to other people's prayer line, but what is the, how is your relationship grown with God? See, this talks about um, we do things out of religion, out of religious creed, and, and out of uh, moral um, correction, um, out of tradition and ritual, religion. But this thing we got with Jesus ain't about religion. About religion, it's not about tradition. It's about relationship, and this is something I often try to help young people understand. This is not about religion. This is not about we religiously do something. We we come to church Sunday religiously. We come to Bible study religiously. We read the Word religiously. We pray religiously. No, this is about relationship. Because of this personal experience that we've had with Jesus Christ, we choose to go to church. We choose to go to Bible study. We choose to study and we want to pray. It's a choice. Just like he chose you and he chose me, this to be in relationship with God is a choice. It's a choice. Thank you. It's a choice. And this is where he wants us to get to. This is relationship. It's not transactional. We thank God that he said that if you give, it'll be given back to you. If my people call by my name, if you do this, then um, I'm going to do that. This thing with God is both, I guess I should say it this way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is both trans, transactional and relational. Because if you don't have the relationship, there are some things you don't get to ask for. If you don't understand your authority... Right? And your identity in Christ, there's some things you won't ask for. Amen? You just won't ask for them because you're not going to think you deserve it. But God needs you to know that you deserve it. And that, was that the song we were all of the glory belong? You deserve Now, in singing that song, we're saying to God, He deserves it. But because He's in you, He's saying, You deserve it. You deserve it, Terry. You deserve it, Sharon. You deserve it, Sister Yolanda. You deserve it. You deserve it, David. That's what he's saying, because I'm in you, and you and me, you deserve it. But if you don't understand your identity, beloved, if you don't accept who you are in this place that you have in God, you don't think you deserve it. You'll constantly allow the enemy to beat you up with condemnation, guilt, and shame. And when God has told you, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. They, Paul had just said in chapter 7, the things I know to do, I find myself not doing. The things I know I should do, I can't find, my, I can't find myself doing. He said, wretched man that I am, wretched woman that I was and sometimes can still be. Don't play. He said, but who can save us? Jesus. That's who will do this. It's him. He'll save me. He'll save me from myself. Hallelujah. He'll give me a new way of thinking. Good God Almighty. <coughs> I love him today. Hallelujah. We got 15 minutes. <coughs> my allergies. Oh my God. I need something to drink. Some water. Mm. So he says, um, we are living in a generation that is searching the whole world over to find out who we are and to find out what our call is in God. 
Amen. Amen. Please make, read the um, our prayer line every morning for some of you who are on uh, that may not normally get on our prayer line. It is every morning, 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 530-881-1212, um, and then the access code. So if you scroll down, scroll down, um, you will be able to see our uh, prayer line every morning, Monday to Monday. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then certainly, um, if you want to give to Healing Streams, I'm just going to do a little public service announcement here. You can text your giving to 317-350- 0046 okay so make sure uh, streamers give your ties bring, submit your offerings um, and then those who are joining us please uh, sow into the ministry of the streams church we do wonderful things in the community and um, you can never lose by giving uh, to God and to his kingdom amen so in this season of COVID while we have been sheltered in what have you learned about God? I see uh, Sister Sharon said a spirit, your, her spiritual senses have become more heightened. What, what has it been for you? Um, it, for me, my, some of the, it's an interesting thing. I was um, on a training and <clears throat> I said, um, I, I was talking to the gentleman and the way he was teaching, I said, this is how I think. I said, but sometimes I, I don't see the manifestation of how I think um, operating in every area of my life. It could be in this area, but not in this area or in these areas, but not in that area. And he said, it's, you got to change the way you think. He said, changing the way you think consistently about every area of your life. And he said, and it, it goes with this lesson. Often there are blockers in our lives, and I teach on blockers as a coach, I teach on blockers, but I had never thought of it this way. Often there are blockers in our lives that stop us from knowing our identity in Christ. Oh, that's great. There is no lack in God, no lack in any area. Amen. If that's what you have learned in this season, someone says more intimacy with God. That is great. What have you learned in this season? How have you grown? And so those things have been heightened in me. I'll take uh, Minister Sharon's word. That that has been heightened in me. Like if I, I think a certain way about something or and I'm quick to correct my words and I'm quick, quick to correct other people's words that they may speak over the, their lives or even over me. But even just quicker, like, uh-uh, wait a minute, grab that thought back. And speaking in the affirmative, taking my future, Terry, amen, uh, taking my future, Terry Dove, and bringing it into my present and speaking it from that place. And so these are the things that I have been tapping into in this season. And all of that goes back to, all of that goes back to knowing your greatness, knowing your identity. I need you to get this. I'm great because God is great and God is in me. That's it. God is in me. God is great. And because he's in me, I'm great. God is a finisher. And because God, he is the author and finisher of my faith. He is Alpha and Omega. And so all of you who may struggle with finishing things, you got to get this. Understanding your identity. Who is in you? And because God is in you and he is a finisher, you can finish. That's good, Sister Andrea. The, learning the importance of being still. All of those are knowing your identi identity in God. And learning how to be still. Knowing this heightened sense of a spiritual sense. All of these wonderful things help us to intercede from a place of freedom. That we're not blocked. A lot of times we, we try to keep this part of the cross free so that we can have access to God and pray to God and intercede and that's great. But a lot of times we got to get this part of the cross right with people, relationships. And so, so that that can be a, a place of freedom and flow. So in the middle, you're always hitting the mark in Jesus when you pray. Good God Almighty, that was good right there. That was straight from him. And you always hitting the bull. You always hitting the mark right there because you're getting these relationships right with other people and then you're keeping the reflow and the relationship with him right <clears throat> and if nothing else that we don't get yes uh mm -hmm. if there's something we don't get in this season god wants us to get that we got to keep all those avenues free 
so that we can hear what he's telling us to do. We can receive what he wants for us to receive. We can say no to what he wants us to say no to. We can say yes to what he wants us to say yes to. God is still resetting. The reset ain't done yet, boo-boo. And you've probably been hearing it all over everywhere. Hallelujah. God is still resetting and he's still resetting you and he's resetting me. And that turning is not just a click turn, right? Sometimes we got to keep turning. Keep turning. God's like, okay, you did that? Great. Now keep turning. It's something else I want to do. Keep turning. I want you to do that. I want you to do this. Yes, the vertical and the horizontal. We got to get it right. So living in this place, we have to get to a point uh, of trying to find our calling, right? Trying to find our calling in God. And in trying to find your calling uh, in God, um, this, uh, this teacher talks about um, often we enter into these distractions. Um, and he says, you're living in a generation that searches the whole world over to find his calling. He said, I believe this focus is uh, on finding our calling has been a massive error, right? <coughs> he said, because what we should be focusing on is our identity. Amen. He said, it's not so much about God, what am I here for? God, but God, who am I? And when we know who we are, it'll lead us. It'll lead us to what are we here for? Often you people will say <clears throat> your passion will lead you to purpose. That actually that's not true. Passion does not lead you to purpose, right? Because passions change, purpose doesn't. So passions, passions will help you. Um, let me restate that. People will say passion, your passion is your purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But passions are not always your purpose because passions change. But passions will lead you to purpose. So, thank you, Jesus. I correct that. Passion will lead you to purpose, but passion is not always your purpose. And so, while we're looking, uh, this is saying, God, what am I here for? If you identify who you are in God, right, and what that assignment is back to Jeremiah... You know, I, I, I created you. I created you to do great things, he said. He said, uh, before the world, I formed you in your mother's womb. He said, and I set you apart and I appointed you to do something. So it isn't knowing who you are. The first part of that text is knowing who you are. God formed me. And he formed me in his image. Okay, I got that. And then he gave me an assignment. The Bible cleared we already know the story about Adam. He created Adam. He put Adam in a place. And then he gave him an assignment. He created Adam in his image. He put him in a place of, of that he, he had dominion over. And he had an assignment. Often we get it out of order. We're trying to find out what our purpose is when we don't even know who we are in God. And we may not really know who God is. For real. We still you know, treating him like a glorified bellhop. Come on. God, I need this. God, I need that. Give me this. Give me that. And then we don't get it. We pout. We have to understand who God is. He said that you would know me. And in the power of my resurrection, the fellowship of my suffering, he wants us to know him. That doesn't mean that God wants your life to be full of suffering. But through that suffering, we learn him in a different way. We grow in a different To some people, being sheltered in has been a suffering. But have you learned God in a different way? Not being able to go to church. We, they're saying the churches can open again in a couple of weeks. Okay. And some people, they're still saying 65 and over, pre-existing conditions, don't come to church. To some people, that's suffering. Because they want to be in the house of God. The church open, I want to be at church. But what are you learning? How are you learning to worship God in another way? Amen. And so we, we understand that these things um, help to create us as kingdom manifestors. Kingdom manifestors. I want to be a kingdom manifester because I know that I am in the kingdom. We know that the scripture says that the kingdom, we, we, the kingdom, God's kingdom is not of this world. It's not of this world. He said, as a matter of fact, I want to tell you that it's not of eat and drink. It, it ain't about all this surface stuff your identity. You're in the kingdom. You're in the kingdom, intercessor. You're in the kingdom, man of God. You're in the kingdom, woman of God. And because you're in, a ki in the kingdom, you have kingdom privileges, right? You're not a pauper. 
You're in the kingdom. You, you're in a kingdom. So if you're in a kingdom, there are just some things and some ways that we do things and how we should think and how we should operate and how we should interact. We're not paupers. We're not outside of the kingdom. We're not in the outer court no more, boo-boo. We're not out there. We, we got access to the holies of holies. Come on in where the table is spread. Good God Almighty. It's good right here. It's good. And so changing the way that we think. You are kingdom. And again, we say all of these things. But God is asking, do you really believe it? Do you believe in your knowing? Do you believe? Do you trust? And do you have faith? It's all three. We, we say we have faith, but we don't trust God. Uh-huh. We say we trust God, but we don't believe. So let me say this really quick as we're wrapping up these last 10 minutes or so. Believing is a mind. It's what you think. So a man thinks, so is he. I believe, therefore I speak. So what you believe up here, you are going to say. That's why you got to keep your mind up on things that are holy, things that are true, and things that are above. You got to think higher than you thinking down here. Okay? So believing is what you think. Trusting is a heart issue. I trust God. I love God. He said, if, if I put my trust in him, I will not be put to shame. That's what he said. And then faith is spiritual. Okay? So you walk in a room. You see a chair. And in your mind, you see that chair, right? And you say, I can, that chair can hold me. So you know what you do? You go and test it out. And you trust that it can hold you. And so you sit in it. And guess what? It holds you. So now you have this faith that every time you get up, you go get a glass of water, you shout, you run, you do whatever you do. But by faith, I'm coming back to my seat because it can still hold me. It takes all three. And in understanding your identity and this relationship and this kingdom mindset and understanding your identity and who you are in God as an intercessor, as a believer, you have to grow to this place of being a kingdom manifester of Christ. Whatever Christ is in the earth is what he has given us the authority to be in the earth. He had wealth. He was a healer. He's a comforter. There's people that need comfort right now with all of this that's going on, whether it's the COVID or whether it's, oh Jesus, all of these um, homicides that have happened. My God, somebody needs comfort. That's in us. We have the ability to do that. Now, how I comfort may not look like how you comfort. And that's okay. Some people use comedy. Some people use um, poetry. Some people use writing. Some people, we use all types of things to bring comfort to people. And that's okay. That's okay. And it's okay for me not to expect the way you do it to look like I do it. Amen? So... We are going to be kingdom manifestors because Christ is in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Bring sunshine and joy into somebody. All of the fruits of the Spirit, they're in you. We definitely have access to them, right? We got access to them. We got access to patience and joy and peace and faithfulness and self-control. Amen. And love. We got access to all of these and God needs for you to use those and give them away. He said the kingdom is not of eat and drink. It is of power. And then he also says that the kingdom is of righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. This is what he wants us to be manifesting in this year. He, he, so so this, this lesson talks about um, you, you have to be a glory shifter. I think that's pretty awesome. That when you show up, the glory of God should show up. The glory of God, the presence of God, the joy of God, everything that is in God is in you. And it should show up. This is understanding our identity. So when you pray, you should expect the glory. You should expect the manifested presence of God to show up. And whether it's there to heal, <coughs> set free, make whole, whatever it is, that's how you can start praying. God, every time I pray, 
Every time I sing to the glory of God, every time I teach to the glory of God, every time I preach to the glory of God, every time you allow me to prophesy to the glory of God, Lord, I need your glory to show up. I need your glory to come in and shift the atmosphere. I need your glory to come in and change the minds of the people. Good God Almighty, I need your glory to come in and set somebody free. I need your glory to come in and break chains. I need your glory to come in, God, and yes, set the captives free. Take out the taste of desire alcohol out of somebody's mouth. Take the desire to hit the pipe out of somebody's mouth. Take the desire, oh God. Hallelujah. Take the desire out. Remove the desire to do that thing. To lie, to steal, to cheat, to fornicate, to commit adultery. Remove pride when, when the glory of God in you, because you know your identity, and you are a glory carrier. You are a glory manifester. A kingdom manifester. So when you come into the room, you say, uh-uh, that thing right there, that spirit, it gots to go. You ain't got to yell at it. You ain't got to raise your voice. You just say that right there, that, that has to go. I sense something. You ain't got to call nobody out. You ain't got to embarrass nobody. Good God Almighty. But ask God to make you that glory carrier. Hallelujah. And it's all for his glory. It's all for his glory. And it's all for his good pleasure. Isn't that good news? You're the, you're the pleasure of God. Did you know that? You're the pleasure of God. <laughs> you be like, uh-uh, because -uh, I barely shoot. Oh, sometimes I don't even like me, but you're the pleasure of God. That's awesome. That is great news. And so understanding uh, these things. So um, it goes on to talk about defining what success is for you. That's something I want you to consider. Um, is your success rooted and grounded in Christ? Is it what God says about you or is it what people say about you? Everyone's definition of success is different and that's okay. For some people, preferably it's not just money, but if it's money and position and uh, influence that allows you to advance God's kingdom, we say amen to that. We need people at every, at every level and on every mountain. Amen. As long as we're giving God the glory in that and we're bringing the glory because we know who we are. We know our identity in Christ. We know our greatness. And greatness, this greatness in God has nothing to do with being cocky or arrogant or prideful. This is true humility. You, What you know, you know. But what you don't know, you say, I don't know that. Let me go find God. Let me go find out and see what God got to say. Let, that, let me see. Let me go study that. And if you come back and still don't have great revelation about it or great understanding, you know what? I don't know. That that is that is such humility to say, I just gotta trust God in that. We gotta trust God in this season. We have to trust God in this COVID shelf still sheltered in. Good God Almighty. We have to still trust God. And so as we close out, I want to remind you, uh, streamers, to please text your gift to 317. 350-0046. Remember our prayer line every uh, morning at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time for one hour. Watch with, uh, with uh, the Strings Church for one hour every morning right here. Uh, I think, uh, well, I'm not going to say that. But you can um, go to our website and you can put in prayer requests there as well. Uh, thestringschurch.org. Amen. You can uh, get all of the information about our prayer call, about our church service, when we're going back into the house of God. What is that going to look like? Um, as well as submitting prayer requests and things of that nature. As we close out, I saw that um, Minister Sharon had listed... Um, everyone since 20, since December 31st that uh, the city has lost and unfortunately the majority of this list are African American uh, young men a few young women and um, Caucasian men it appears and so I just want to call out their names as we close out uh, in uh, this and knowing, knowing again our identity and our authority and honestly it's about healing their families right now I certainly pray that as people are protesting um, the senseless taking of um, Sean's life that young man yesterday that we get become as fired up about 
any life that is taken senseless, whether it's by a Caucasian to an African American or a police to an African American or African American upon African American. We should not pick and choose when we want justice. God is a God of justice and it should be justice across the board. And so when we pick and choose where we want justice, then I believe we, we, we halt God's hand to bring justice because we want to say we want it over here, but we don't want it over there. Someone knows who shot that baby on 38th and Arlington. Someone knows that eight-year-old who lost his life with a bullet that came through their home, uh, uh, Roderick, amen. Someone knows that. Someone knows uh, the baby, um, Naya, the 16-year-old. Someone knows. And so we should want justice for their families as well. So let, let's just lift up these families and we'll close out again. Please uh, text your seed. Uh, to uh, the Strings Church, um, <clears throat> excuse me, at 317-350-0046. Go to our website, uh, thestringschurch.org, and let's just lift up uh, these families. Uh, Brother Leon Biggie, Peter Lambermont, LaShawn Parker, Adrian Alexander, George Johnson, Krishan Sne Snelling, I believe this is a female, Shanja Scott, Shane McFarland, Diane McFarland, Marvell Clifton, Tanya Meyer, Blunt um, Sunitha Costa, Nicholas Fine. A Kamar, Ashka Kamar, Stephen Jamel, uh, last um, mm, wow, she's Asian. Mm. Maya they Asian, Asian female, female. Sorry, uh, Jalen Roberts, Marcel Willis, Braxton Ford, Kamara Hunt, Robert, uh, Lazar, uh, Brother Brown. Uh, Dexter Howard, Chad, Richard Williams, <clears throat> excuse me, Hanson Arnold, I'm sorry, some of these I didn't copy over well, Jan, uh, Wafield, Marcus Lovett, Daryl Stennis, I believe is his last name, Jeremiah Harden, Larry Owens, Maurice Swan, Justin Bond, Juan, <clears throat> Cap, uh, I, I didn't bring that one all the way over, John Jennings, DeMario, Jose, Roderick Payne Jr., mm, mm, mm. Adrian Riley, DeJora Taylor, Yana Orr, Daryl White, Tara Alexander, Kevon Hall, Rayshawn, mm -mm -mm. Angela Summers, Eric Whitfield, Naya Cope, Larry Cosby, Sean Reed, Mikhail Ross, Roderick Payne, Ashlyn Lisby, Brianna Leaf, Angela Summers, and Naya Cope. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up every name and every family member, Lord. We ask that you bring comfort into their homes and into their hearts, God. For everyone who has lost someone since January 31st until today, God, we ask that you be a comfort. God, we ask that you bring peace into the land of our city and into the hearts of your people. God, move by your power and move by your strength. God, we know that the prince of the air is roaming to and fro, seeking who he can devour. And God, I ask that you not let 
us as a people or a community or human beings continue to give the devil the weapons that you took back. You said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God, you promised that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Any tongue that rises against us, you've given us the power to condemn. Father, you told us in Colossians that you took the weapons of the enemy and made a public spectacle of him by triumphing over him by the cross. So Lord, let us not give him back the weapons that you have taken. So Lord, we ask for peace in our city and peace in our streets. We ask for wisdom. Raise up the leaders that can reach this generation. Generation Z and the millennials, God. Raise up those people that those young people will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to them through those persons. Father, we trust you to do it. We trust the right thing be done through the prosecutor and the mayor and the young man in Atlanta who was stopped by neighbors when he was just jogging in his neighborhood. So, Father, we need you. We need you. And we are your people who will pray. We thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. Please, uh, again, feel free to give to the Streams Church. Hilly Streams members, you already know what to do. Amen. Submit your tithe and your offering. Uh, and just continue to be givers in the kingdom. And, and God will continue to bless you. Go to our website. Again, if you would like information uh, concerning or would like to submit a prayer. And then again, 6.30 a.m. every morning, Eastern Standard Time. Join us uh, for uh, conference call prayer. And pastor does a sermonette at the end, last 15 minutes. So log on. You will be blessed. Thank you again for joining us. We love you with the love of the Lord. I pray that someone receives something to know their identity their worth, their value, their kingdom position in Christ. I love you with the love of the Lord. Bye.